Hello, book lovers. And adventurers. Everywhere. My name is Jess. And I'm MC. And this is Is CamCat Unwrapped. Unwrapped. Previously on CamCat Unwrapped, Into the Margins. Welcome, everyone, to the margins. What the fuck is happening? East is not working alone. Uh, You see, it is a hound uh, at the beck and call of a version of the Council of Four and the Cult of Stars. You died in Alethia. You and the Starbreakers failed to defeat the Dread Knight. You were eaten by feasts. What do we do now? We need to somehow turn the tide of fear against three separate worlds, being being the, sort of the rough draft heroes. Is that what I'm getting? Is that what you're sort of putting down? Freaking out over here, I'm sorry. A quarter pounder with pickles. Quarter pounder with pickles. I am very open to that being my summoning phrase. Hera is alone, kind of sadly eating some grapes. Do you think the grapes and the wine are redundant at the same time? <laughs> Jacqueline? Hi. You're dead! No, not yes. right. Well, it's a long story. We need the power of the lords. My mother holds most of that. I mean, we could fix that. Can we well, do like a, can we do like a cut to like Josh and Phoenix dressed up in like elaborate costumes? Watermelons in your corset, guys. I <laughs> yeah. Sure I can. Yeah. Yeah. We're off. Uh, we're fantasy Uber drivers. You can stop adding fantasy to everything you say. Hey, Phoenix. Quick aside. This is fantasy land. Right. Well, get them. Get them. That's fair. <laughs> All right. I'm not gonna kill you. You're never gonna remember your kid's name again. Quarter pound yeah. of pickles. I slid open the bag of bones and dumped them on the floor and I say, Pickles, do it right here. Whatever you're doing seems to be working. Keep going. And welcome back to some excellent CamCat Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I'm your dungeon master this week and every week, MC Smitherman. Uh, joining me as always are uh, our lovely authors and co-hosts. Uh, let's start off with reintroductions. Uh, we'll start off with going the way I can see you on my screen, uh, Jess. Hi. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to get an introduction. Hello, CamCat family. Um, my name is Jess. I am the typical host of CamCat Unwrapped, relinquishing my power this couple of episodes to my lovely uh, dungeon master and co-host, <laughs> um, MC Smitherman. And I am so excited to be here once again as Daffodil Pickle with these fantastic authors. They've been such a blast to play with. And I can't wait to see what shenanigans we get into this session. Hello, everybody. My name is Alexander James. I'm the author of The Woodkin. Today, I'm playing my main character, Josh Mallory, who is just a guy. We are dabbling in incredible worlds of fantasy and epic scale world building. And my guy is just a dude who works at Amazon. He's just a guy. (laughs) It's just a plain, regular, non-magical, non fantasy, mediocre white man. Hello, I'm Jordan H. Bartlett, author of Contest of Queens and Queen's Catacombs and the upcoming Queendom Come. If the titles don't give it away, my books are about queens and ruling the world as a woman. And today I'm playing the main character, Queen Jacqueline Tabbert, and hopefully she stays main character uh, alive. (laughs) Hi, I'm Elijah Menchaka. I am the author of the Glint Chasers novels. Uh, they met in a tavern and they split the party and coming eventually they played their role. I uh, will be playing Phoenix, one of the five Starbreakers who make up the main adventuring party of the books. And he is the uh, sad smart one. That's Those are our players. I'm MC Smitherman, professional dungeon master. Air quotes, maybe. Uh, and sales and marketing assistant at CamCat. Uh, and without further ado, let's get back into our adventures here in the lands of Freya, Asher, and Washington, United <laughs> States Earth. So, protagonists, you're currently in the margins. This um, weird paper-constructed glowing space that uh, forms and shifts based off of your wishes 
uh, planning your next move, you don't have a whole lot of time, but depending on what you do, that time can be extended or delayed. Uh, how are you planning to tackle your next threat? Uh, you've been informed that going to Asher and weakening the cult of stars uh, is the best way to sort of continue to starve feast to make it something that you could actually fight. Um, and there's a big portal in somewhere in Asher. Uh, no, you actually do know that it is in Lorraine. There's a massive rift that leads directly to this feast consumed earth, the original uh, tainted draft. Uh, how would you like to proceed? So I just have a few questions. Daffodil, either you can answer them or you can get the ladybug. The Cult of Star The Cult of Stars is the one causing the problems that are fueling feasts. So it seems like general fear is what is fueling feast, but the Cult of Stars has kind of unleashed that kind of um fear and feast. Um uh, uh, in Asher, if I am correct, Helga? Yes, yes, you are. Um the, the the cult of stars are the ones who uh, opened the portal for Feast in the first place, believing that it was a starborn that would uh, either they would defeat in battle or would consume Asher. Uh, neither happened. Instead, they controlled this being and convinced it to fight with them. Uh, so all of this, uh, their, their control over this being and uh, its power, with its power and with their own power, they've sort of created a global tyranny around the world. Uh, there's a small rebellion uh, that is you know, mostly based out of uh, the ruins of Relgan Phoenix, uh, as I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, they are doing what they can to combat these nefarious forces, but there's only so much they can do without uh, proper armament or a plan. Great. That's all, that's all I needed to know. How close can you get us to Rogan and the Rebellion? Uh, we can certainly try to get uh, somewhere within the vicinity of them. They are cloaked from uh, many efforts of scrying, even our own. But we can get you into the general vicinity and you can see if you can try to locate them. Good assuming enough. they are still alive. That would be a problem if they died. Let's hope for the best, shall we? Yeah. Worth a look anyway. Mallory, Jack, you good to go? Hi. Uh, no. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, questions, Phoenix. Um, we're sort of... So we're going to your re realm planet land? Apparently. I'm not quite sure what the what the accepted vernacular is for your sort any of, like of those, brand of this trip. Any of those would work. Okay. Um, so... Again, apologies. I'm, I'm not trying to breach any etiquette here. Uh, my sort of like baseline for weirdness has been sort of thrashed over the last three and a half hours or so. What am I getting into here? Because like I just came from a mom napping, very successful, might I add, but some for some weird reason I couldn't like injure anybody past like boo boo status. Is that sort of do those rules sort of translate to your scenario, or are we are we hopping are we hopping across a line here? I've, ki I've been killing people since I was 17 years old. <laughs> okay, okay. So a slight tone shift, you would okay. say. And by killing, you mean permanently? <laughs> <laughs> just, been so, just so concerned. Just so concerned. <laughs> there were a couple that came back. Once. Okay. That's good to know. I also have a question. Are you the king in your land? No, should, no. Should I've been uh, bowing this whole time. No, God, no. I'm probably. Sort of, yes, I mean, she is Jack. royalty. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Uh, you should have been bowing to her. I um, mean, a, a curtsy is customary, but it, it's fine. We're we're on we're on this. It's fine. And so, Phoenix, wasn't. what is your status in this world? Are you? Well, I was sort of a work-for-hire, uh, think mercenary, but not exclusive to fighting battles. I did a lot. I did a lot of odd jobs, usually like involving a knight monsters. Who gets paid? Yeah, honestly, pretty close. And I didn't work. Didn't necessarily work for a king. I was sort of. We're called freelancers. Oh yeah, I know freelancers. 
Yeah. Great. <laughs> Great. I'm, a, I'm kind of a freelancer. I mean, like, when I get fired, I will be. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, great. Uh, freelancer. That's what we're... I love how for Josh, it's a when, not an if. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. Yeah. listen. Oh, yeah. All right. I, uh, uh, I was. These days, I'm just... I was good at it for a while, and then we stopped. Relgan, uh, we messed up. People stopped paying you? No. Uh, well, I mean, they did, but that's because... We quit working. Oh my my group's my group my team's last job before this last year was in Relgan and it went badly. Relgan's where the the rift is for this uh, this sort of like portals scenario that we're going to, right? Relgan's the, where the rebellion is. Portals in Lorraine. Lorraine, last time I went to, we fought. We've just fought the server. Um, well, we just fought a dread knight and a lot of uh, undead. We won. If we're, if I've got my story straight, the me and my friends fr from the world we're going to lost then, so that might be overrun with the, with undead. Relgan, I have no idea what it'll be like if people are there because last time I saw Relgan, it was empty because everyone in it died. And so you going back to your land, being alive, even though people saw you die, is going to be okay because people in your world die more. But get brought back as well. This would actually, if if I don't bother to explain myself, this will be the second time I've come back from the dead. Okay, so we might not have to do as much explaining. No, then I mean we might. can slap a fake mustache on you and call it a day. We don't even have to explain anything. Just pretend you're a different dude. Your dress disguises worked well in my world. Fact. I think we have some juicy melons lying around still. <laughs> I think I think my clothes are fine. Do you want juicy melons? No. They have to be juicy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, be they're honest, worthless if they're dry. Do you want juicy melons? <laughs> no. <laughs> Zone of truth. <laughs> uh, okay, but, but <laughs> sort of practically speaking, now that we are going into this world of uh, waste and uh, resurgence of life, do we need to, like, prepare materially for it? Because, like... I have a rifle and my wits. I mean, like, do do we need anything like, I, you know, big bag of weed, a protective rock, uh, an additional bag of gummy bag of bears, bones? another bag of bones? You're armed. You're armored. I've known people who w work with less and survive longer. Absolute W. Perfect. All right. Well, if that is all sorted, then uh, you are more than welcome to open a portal if there's nothing else to attend to. And so we're going to Lorraine, but we're we're going to Relgan with the first. Rebellion in Rogan. Relgan first. See who's fighting. See what their biggest oh. problem is. Go to the problem. Blow it up. Rogan, it is. Uh, the crown looks nice. Thank you. I went to four oh, stores and couldn't find a crown, so this is a necklace. Okay. We're going to see how long it <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. No one is selling crowns in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a very nice touch, and it was very necessary. You needed this <clears throat> necklace on your head. Fact. On, Fact. on your head, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Daffodil, could you roll a D100 for me? Um, so that's going to be yeah. the two D10s. Uh, look like right these guys, there. which you probably can't see on the camera. Yeah. So roll both of those and tell me what they are. That's going to be a six. Just a, a six? Total. 60? Uh, I, it... No, zero, zero, six. Oh, so no. zero, zero on That's one, six. six on the other. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huge. You did really well, Daphne Pickle. You really tried right. your best, and that's all that matters. <laughs> Guys, was that my first roll of the campaign? <laughs> we're we're uh, off to a great start. <laughs> yeah, so... You're the... You're not the editor. The editor would be able to get you much closer because she's very familiar with this. I would say that you, having never actually been here, but you've heard about it... Um, 
She's a, she's a uh, fan. But you're she's read she's read the books. You've yeah, yeah, yeah. you've read the yeah. books. You've helped edit the books. You know the different destinations and stuff. So I'm gonna say that you know that you've because you haven't actually been here though. We're gonna say the middle ground here is seen casually. Um, okay. Now a six on that uh, does land you in the mishap uh, sort of area of this. So you open up a portal. Uh, and the three of you uh, step through, uh, leaving Daffodil Pickle behind, uh, as she will be uh, appear whenever you call on her. Um, Bye, guys. Who goes oh, in? F- what's fun. our marching order here? Me first. All right. So Phoenix first, then Jax can go next, and then Jax, and then Josh. <laughs> Not Josh, that she doesn't go through the portal. A so, uh, really quick, above table MC, what's our summon phrase for uh, Daffodil Pickle? We came up with one. Quarter, quarter pounder with pickle. Quarter pounder with pickles. There yeah, it is. Yeah, okay, quarter pounder with so pickles. Um, um, what, what does it look like outside this portal before I step my very delicate human foot out into this world? Yeah, uh, so uh, when this portal opens from the margins, uh, like it carves this tear in the wall, which... <laughs> opens up and then it's sort of this like wibbling wobbling uh almost like a weird galaxy through a heat wave uh type thing that you're seeing and the others Mm -hmm. just sort of step through no real hesitation there uh but you're the last one behind can i see where they go or do they just disappear into this wibbly wobbly timey wimey they go through and it's like someone dropped into a lake so like ripples come afterwards but it's still this sort of you can't tell where it's going i'll Stick my head out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> fully, yeah. Uh, you stick your head in and you feel gravity shift where your head is and you fall through. Uh, Phoenix, you step through. Uh, you are someplace very, very dark and kind of pretty cold. Uh, but you can't see anything around you. And you are alone. And the portal shuts behind you. Okay, that's no. not ideal. Magical tinkering, I'm going to make a little light. <laughs> yeah, uh, you... A uh, little light. You are currently in a... Well, the ground is stone, but your light doesn't extend far enough to see walls or the ceiling. Oh. But you're definitely what underground. What kind of stone? Just, just like uh, natural it's... stone... Yeah, it's There's natural stone. stone. Um, there's these... Uh, as you look at the stone, you can see, like, roots have broken through and, like, slitter the ground, but they're all dead. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully not too far. I will stand up and just start following the roots with the light for lack of any, a better landmark. Sure, roll a nature check for me. Great. Okay, that's... I'm smart. Twelve... Seventeen. Seventeen. Nice. That's pretty good. You are pretty smart. Um, you begin following the roots, and eventually you do feel a draft. Um, you start heading in the direction of the draft. There goes the crown. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was a nice time while it lasted, Okay. <laughs> I looked down. Sucked once. off in the portal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't look Hello? down as a queen. Pause. That's the first lesson of royalty. Oh, That's no. true. If you're gonna I'm look just... down, you have to look down your nose. Oh, I need to work on that. See, mm-hmm, Jax is new mm-hmm. to this. <laughs> She's new to this, and so we we will forgive uh, her la- her ladyship. <laughs> uh, but Phoenix, you start heading towards the draft. Um, what's your passive perception? <laughs> oh, it's garbage. Yeah. Uh, spe- no. Specifically, it's a nine. A oh nine. no, it's not. I have pro- oh. I forgot. I have proficiency in perception. Uh, it's a sixteen. What? That's quite that can't high. Be right. I love that you're just giving Elijah's passive perception. You're like, I don't think I would be able to perceive this. But <laughs> oh wait, <laughs> oh never mind, never mind, never mind. I forgot. I didn't edit the modifier when we swapped his wisdom and whatnot. It's a thirteen. Uh. 13. That makes more sense if it was originally you thought it was a 9. Um, so, with the 13 passive perception, uh, yeah, you keep following this draft. Um, 
And eventually you get to a point where it starts going uphill or on an athletics check for me to sort of climb towards where you can see a little sliver of light. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hey, that's really good. Uh, 17 plus nothing. Uh, 17. 17. Excellent. Um... <laughs> I accidentally, when I was writing down the infusions I did for everyone, I wrote down Radiant Woman instead of Radiant Weapon. I like that better. <laughs> that that is like that a better. pretty good infusion. Both are true. Not gonna lie. Oh, my woman, pretty radiant. Pretty radiant. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, here it is, right at the top of my files. All right. Once you're still, you know, my man. Your passive perception was thirteen. Thirteen. Attacker wins. Uh, yeah. <sighs> So yeah, you are going up. Your athletics is pretty good, so you're able to keep your footing. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you are able to make it to where this light is. Uh, and you step out and you are outside. Uh, you see mountains around you uh, as this cool wind blows by. Uh, it's night out. The stars are twinkling in the sky. Uh and we are going to leave Phoenix where he is for now as we jump to Jax. Jax, you step through this portal. Um, oh, where'd my crown go? Yeah, it, you, the reason your crown is gone is because as you step through the portal, uh, make a dexterity save for me. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, dexterity save. A dirty 20. Dirty 20. Yes. Very, very good to get that now, because as you step through the portal, <laughs> uh, this wind blasts by you and you are on a cliff's edge. Your foot is uh, your feet are like if we have the edge of the cliff here, your feet are going over the edge um, and you like slam your back up against uh, the mountain behind you. And there's maybe half a foot of stone underneath your feet. Uh, it is like this really strong wind as it's snowing up where you are and you are like on a mountaintop and you look over the edge uh, and massive vertigo hits you as you are hundreds and hundreds of feet above the next landing. Oh, wow. And yeah. does it your crown look- does fall off your head and like, <laughs> no, and it just falls and then <laughs> through a cloud, which is below. Does it? Does it look like, like, would I have any reason to leave? I might have been transported to my cliff, or is this very different? Uh, no, this is very different. As you roll a, just a general investigation or perception check for me. You have a cliff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> all, all the best ones do. It's a metaphor for class divide. Um, hey. <laughs> uh, sorry, what am I rolling? In- investigation, investigation or perception. Uh... Josh, did you spray water out of your nose? No. <laughs> it came out of my mouth. Okay. You're like, a civilized I'm person. Yeah. I'm a grown up. <laughs> Drinks from a curly straw. I got mm-hmm. a 15. 15. Perception. All right. On perception? Yeah, this is definitely not uh, the sort of realms of Freya. As you see, like, these mountains sort of are big and jagged and then go... Uh, down and you can see like this expanse of a continent you don't recognize Um, and then you see like more mountains popping up in the distance and like some vaguely distant towns and like columns of smoke and with a 15 you do see an anomaly within uh, this sort of generally like oh it's uh, beautiful nature uh, sort of thing but it's all dark because it's nighttime then you see this a uh, series of super bright lights off in the distance. Um, you're not sure which cardinal direction it is, but it is like forward to the right of wherever you are. Uh, and it's this blazing uh, red, purple, and crap, what was the last one? And like pale blue spires of light uh, way, way off in the distance that are like lighting up what looks to be a uh, city of sorts. <clears throat> okay. And is there, n- is it just a wedge? Like, is there any way down? Uh, if you're a mountain goat, there's plenty of ways down. Uh, if you're just a normal person in plate armor, 
It's tough. You do sort of see a route where you could, like, clamber down a little bit, but it's going to be dicey. Excellent. What would you like to do? I would like to summon my steed. Of course, yes. And uh, I would like to summon Altus Hermes to me, please. Yeah, uh, what does summoning uh, a griffin look like for Jax? Um, oh, I want to do like an anime cutscene. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we can fully do a Sailor Moon transformation. A new theme song starts want. playing. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. Um, I think she would just call like to the skies. Mm-hmm. Um, Altus to me. <laughs> And you see, um, diving out of, uh, like, you see a star, uh, like a north star glows brighter and brighter and brighter until you realize that it's a comet. And that comet becomes a griffin as it (laughs) into the mountaintop beside you. And glorious uh, feather remain of this uh, griffin (laughs) uh, comes and, like, flies over and, like, hovers beneath you. Allowing you to leap onto her, his, their. It. It onto its uh, back. Oh, amazing! Um, she's gonna do a little bow first, and mm-hmm. then of jump course on. it bows in the air, and it does like bump its beak against your chest, and then like preen you a little bit until it realizes that you are in quite dire straits, and then allows you to hop on, uh, and you begin to soar on your griffin uh, across these mountains. Um, uh, you had rolled a 15 on your perception. I'll let that carry over as you see uh, a red flare up into the air. And then you see a brilliant green light from a mountain. Oh, God, I hit my mic. Uh, soars across uh, soars across the horizon, uh, rocketing towards where this... A uh, flare came from, and you can see that there's two people standing where that flare came from. Uh, where would you like, what would you like to do? Would you like to try to intercept this green comet, or would you like to go to where it's going? Um, I think I would, I have a good sense that those two people are my two people, right? Even maybe. if it's wrong, but like, this is what maybe I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, I mean, who else would I'm- be in distress out in the middle of the mountains you were supposed to teleport to? And Phoenix seems like a guy who has flares. Mm-hmm. And Josh seems like a guy who would use flares. So, <laughs> <laughs> so right, right. she she's gonna head that way. Is there an a like is there potential for me to stop the comet? Like, is it a big comet? Is it just light? Is it? Uh, it looks like a brilliant green, a uh, brilliant green light, like, about human-sized. Oh. Um, then maybe... I don't think I have a spell for that. Maybe she'll just try and reach the two guys first. Okay. And, like, high tingle it that way. Yeah, and you start... Uh, and you're on track to probably hit them about the same time as this green ball of humanoid-shaped light. Um... If, you know, you've done your math of if a train leaves at uh, 30 miles an hour from a station 40 minutes away and another one leaves at 15 miles an hour, half an hour away, when will they meet? Um, you're like, yeah, yeah, that, that's, we'll probably get there around the same time. Uh, and yeah. as you were doing those calculations and Altus Hermes is just dive bombing towards there, uh, we jump to Josh. Josh, uh, you step through, you poke your head through the portal and immediately are f- sucked through and fall maybe 15 feet. Uh, roll a dexterity save for me. Or an acrobatics check. Uh, dexterity save of 12. 12. Great. You take uh, two points of bludgeoning damage as you land, uh, as you like sort of try to right yourself in the air like a cat and just land like a cat uh, and kind of like almost sprain your forearm as you land on all fours. Like, ah, oh, oh, oh. Nice. Um, uh, but you get up. Uh, after a minute of uh, self-pity and look around. You are in the middle of uh, mountainside, uh, not alone. You are surrounded by uh, three people 
uh, who all have like blades leveled down at you and they're standing in a triangle around you. Uh, uh, what's the status of my rifle? Did I fall with it? Is it on the ground? Is it slung over my shoulders? Uh, it's slung over your shoulders currently. Okay. Um, can I get a quick, I mean, like a quick insight check if they mean me harm? Did they expect me? Am I a surprise? I, I want to try and read yeah. like micro expressions to the best of my ability. Yeah, roll an insight check. Uh, that's going to be, ooh, boy, I tell you what, guys, I'm rolling right down the middle here. 13. 13. It's not too hard to gather how they're feeling about all of this because uh, general surprise and like being on their guard is like they don't mean to hurt you immediately. Like they haven't drawn their weapons and gone to strike you. They've drawn their weapons because uh, like anyone would be, even in a land of uh, mystical, magical nature, uh, you fell out of the sky uh, through a portal that none of them created and they don't know anyone who creates portals like that and they weren't expecting you to appear. So this is general, like, you've landed next to us. We're armed and on edge. Uh, and one of them, uh, a man with... Uh, no, he's not with you. Uh, you see, uh, two of them have swords and then one is this uh, young woman uh, who... Uh, as she holds her arms out to you, these vines, like thorny vines, out of her arms and like uh, land in the ground around you and uh, make an athletics check. Nine. Nine. Uh, yeah, that is a failure as uh, these thorny vines wrap around you and tie you to the ground. Uh, and she says, State your name and purpose. Uh,. Hi. I maybe one of these days I'll get used to this sort of like you guys have different ways of saying hello than I do. My name is Josh Mallory. My business is question mark. I'm not really sure. Uh, roll a persuasion check for me. Ah, seventeen. Better. Seventeen. Uh, we'll roll an insight for them. Okay, uh, give me one second to look through this glossary. Looking at insight uh, for just a guy. Just a guy. <laughs> just, just a guy, you guys. Just a guy. Uh, they can be insightful all they want. That's the God's honest truth is I'm just a guy. <laughs> uh, so the, the vines that have come up, that have come out of this uh, young woman's uh, arms and into the earth and then around you uh, sort of stop digging into your skin quite as much. And she says, right. What was your name? Uh, it is Josh Mallory. Josh Mallory. Do you know him? And I smile winningly. <laughs> A winning smile indeed. Uh, and uh, this young woman turns to um, this sort of like armored uh, man that is standing next to her with his sword out towards you and says, do you recognize him? And he says, I don't know. I uh, never heard of the name before. And he's dressed weird. Do we kill him? No, no, you don't. I know, <laughs> I know uh, Phoenix. Phoenix. I'm a friend of Phoenix's. Do you know Phoenix? Uh, roll another persuasion check. <laughs> Nat 20, baby. Oh, yeah. shit. All right. Let's go. Um, <laughs> Immediately, uh, these two, uh, God, I can't believe I don't have his name. Um, Elijah, you know who I'm talking about, right? Uh, What's the guy's if name? So, if it's Is the it same Benjamin? age as, it, it's, it's Bart, if it's the Bart. Bart. Yeah, yeah, yeah Bart. Uh, great. Uh, yeah, so Do the it. vines immediately, uh, uncom like, come undone around you and this woman, like, they, uh, <sighs> Ah, uh, Phoenix. What do you mean you know Phoenix, present tense? I am... And you feel... Or... I need you to make a... Uh, what's the save for Zone of Truth? Uh, charisma, right? Charisma. charisma. Yeah. Uh, roll a charisma save for me. 18. 18. Uh, that beats it. Uh, so you have a magic being cast on you uh, that you can tell... This was actually cast on you before, um, and it's this, like, truthful charm. 
Now it's cast on you. Would you like to resist it? You have the option to. You know what? Yeah, yeah. Consent is important. Don't cast shit on me without my approval. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you see uh, this uh, man, he uh, grasps an amulet around his neck, uh, mutters a prayer, and there's this warmth that washes over you all, and then he looks up at you and sort of narrows his eyes a little bit. But is there really quick, MC? I, I I hate to interrupt. Is the last time Zone of Truth was cast on me? Did I re, did I recognize any sort of like physical change in myself? Because like what I'm what I'm driving at is I want this guy to think I failed that save. Uh, with the way that the spell works, uh, the caster knows no matter what whether Fuck. or not they uh, succeed or fail. Um, right. But you can certainly try to roll a deception check. <laughs> I think um I think Josh is not Josh he's, doesn't he, know like, it. he's savvy but he's not that savvy. I think he's just going to kind okay. of just be like Sally forth, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh so this guy narrows his eyes at you um but looks over to the woman, shakes his head a little bit. And she sighs. Right, well, that makes it harder. Um my name is Ruby. Phrasing. Uh, yeah. All right. You are just a guy, I guess. Um, with just that a guy. Comment. Uh, great. How do you know Phoenix? He and I are, and I cannot stress this enough, best friends. <laughs> um, and my internal, my internal like thinking is like because his name <laughs> kept me alive four seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> I have never uh, mentally yeah. clung tighter to this stranger than I am in this exact moment. Yeah, and this definitely isn't a situation where you've clung... You, you know, definitely never clung to a stranger for security in the past before and had it go poorly. Um, what that's never happened business, to you. MC? <laughs> <laughs> I will when it's... Uh, but this is all my business. Um, and, she's, and the man says, Huh. Well, that's new. I didn't think that he really had that many friends. At least not that we hadn't heard about. Um, now, now you had mentioned. Now you say that you are his best friend. He's alive. Now, so sorry to so sorry to be a little persnickety about it, but who exactly are you? Because I know my best friend Phoenix wouldn't like me driving sort of personal information just willy nilly. So why don't you explain who you are and what you're doing here? Um. Uh, well, like I said, I'm Ruby. I, uh, Phoenix was helping me with an issue, and it's turned into a non-issue. Um, Sounds like he did a great job. Yeah, so, I mean, he didn't really help, but he died, so that's fine. I don't oh. really blame him for not helping. Um, but I've gotten a lot better. It turns out that I didn't really need the help. Uh, and uh, the other man there says, and I'm Bart. Um, I uh, worked with one of Phoenix's associates and did some work with him as well. Uh, and now we're just carrying on his memory. We were all glint chasers, or, well, we were trying to be glint chasers uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, as, mm -hmm. as much as they did exist. Um, but we've never heard of you. Unsurprising. Where do you hail from? Uh, I hail from Earth. It's a, it's a faraway kingdom. Uh, or realm, you probably aren't familiar. Um, yes, no, I've never heard of it, but I'm not too studied uh, in history uh, outside. I of understand. Religion, so. It's just really hit the e part. E Earth is how Earth. you pronounce it. E R. Right. Yeah, you can you can hit that sort of middle inflection. That's nice, actually. Um, where are <laughs> we currently? Uh, we are uh, in the mountains outside of well, once were the ruins of Relgin. Um, if you knew Phoenix, I did. You do you know Phoenix. Current. Where is the Phoenix you know? And why are you here alone without him? I'm scouting ahead, the making sure check. it's safe. Safety <laughs> check, please. <laughs> That's a net oh. one, MC. Let's go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, one. <laughs> yes. <laughs>
Was it the delay that tipped them off? Or... <laughs> was it the delay? So Bart now says, oh, I must have gotten it wrong. No, um, he is under the effect of uh, the zone of truth. Um, right, I am. scouting ahead. Lovely. Could you guide us back to him then? Absolutely, I can, this way. And I pick a random direction and start walking. <laughs> Great. Roll a perception check for me. Is this for, uh, like, way? Is this by any chance like a wayfinding perception? Or is this just straight uh, up and down perception? Uh, what would be the difference for you? Four points. You have an effect that. Oh, oh, uh. Oh, I mean, is this your favorite terrain? I'm uh, forest is the, my favorite terrain. So I was about my next question was going to be how forested is this particular mountain top? Uh, this mountain top is uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Elijah, but I believe it's pretty barren of life. Unless is, something is drastic. Unless something's drastically changed, no. Yeah, it's there's nothing. Nothing grows yeah. outside. Uh, okay. So this is straight up just rocks. Straight perception it is then. Um, that yeah. is a. Uh, 17. 17. Pretty good. Uh, you see, um, maybe, uh, 500-ish feet away, like, over, uh, mountaintop, you see a, uh, this red flare shoot up into the air, and then, uh, from way off in the distance, a green comet lights up and begins, uh, coming towards where that flare is. Uh, I will lead, I will lead the group that direction. Great, yeah. Um, you begin leading them that direction, and uh, roll an insight check for me. Ugh, that one is a... That's a hard nine. Hard nine. Um, uh, you see uh, Bart's shoulders tense a little bit uh, mm -hmm. as that flare goes up and he sees the green light. Uh, but they stay behind you. Uh, other than that, fairly just following you as you guide them to Phoenix. Yeah. Uh, and we jump back to Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix, you step out of uh, the cave. You end up outside. Uh, and immediately a sword is brought to your th uh, throat from someone behind you. Um, now, don't be hasty, friend. Um, but... I'm afraid that you've you've chosen the wrong skin to wear. Uh, and uh, as the blade is there, you feel a hand uh, go into your satchel, pull out a fire sphere, uh, sm uh, like strike it on the ground and throw it up into the sky. And this red uh, fire sphere goes up. Um, now, don't move, or we'll have a nasty little problem now, won't we? Um, it'd Do be I recognize this rather voice? troublesome to get some information from your corpse. Do I recognize this voice? Roll an insight check. I just, when you said you feel a hand, I thought this was going a very different direction. <laughs> I did too, and then he said, and, it, and he reaches in. I was like, oh, does he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, we were on the same brainwave, because I was like, Y'all are on <laughs> a nasty brainwave. This does not seem, <laughs> this does not seem consensual. <laughs> the, the insight check what was is, your insight? Uh, insight check is three. Three. Oh, no. The inside checks a three. Ooh, that's a big yikes. Um, Phoenix is just hoping it was a sexy hand and doesn't think. Yeah, uh, you don't recognize this voice. Uh, you know that they're um, like it sounds Do vaguely familiar. Like it's someone you've run into in your past. Probably. Do I recognize the sword? Do I recognize the sword? Um. Phoenix just like throws his hands up, starts feeling the blade for like, <laughs> well, look, I, I, well, I, I just, look, like that's nice, that's nice craftsmanship. <laughs> as you look, um, as you look down, like to examine the sword, you do see that it's pointed at a weird angle where no one should be able to be holding it. Oh no. Okay. Like, like if someone's right behind you, the sword point is here. Normally, when a sword is held to your throat, it's like yeah. that. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's come yeah. and pointed up here, like straight against your pulse, um, and it's just sort of like uh, floating there, perfectly still. 
Okay. Either there, either there's two of you, and the invisibility is not working correctly, or that thing can fly. Oh, well, aren't you a good guesser there, Phoenix? He says, and you can hear the air quotes as <laughs> this green comet lights up in the distance and begins to fly towards you. So how about you save us a little time before reinforcements arrive and tell us who you really are? If that light is who I, is who I think it is, I think she can tell you. Oh, she's not going to be doing much talking. You all have played this trick many times. Uh, we're tired of it, quite frankly. It's not scary. It's not going to feed your dark lord or whatever. And I haven't had access to nearly enough nails for this all to make sense or to be bearable. It's just pissing me off more than anything. Yeah, brass and touch. Did you really get this grumpy when I died? Uh, you feel the sword uh, stab you a little bit more. You do not get to claim to be him. And stepping out around uh, from behind you, uh, you see a one-armed, haggard-looking uh, brass. Like, hair is uh, all, like, pushed back and, like, uh, messed up. He's got bags under his eyes, missing his left arm entirely. Like, his coat jacket's just hanging there limply as this uh, floating sword, uh, this dancing blade is at your throat and he steps around and like point, puts a nail into his mouth and lights it up. A nail is like a joint, right? Or a cigarette. Yeah. 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 Yep. So for those who aren't familiar with it, but if you're not familiar with it, why aren't you? It's re read the books. This is going to ruin it for you. Uh, uh, really quick, what, what, what book would that be, MC? Uh, that would be, uh, they split the party and they met in a tavern in the opposite uh, orders. Nice. Um, you should read those books. They're pretty good. Pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, lots of action. Are, Great. Um, but he puts it in and then like lights a match on his boot and then uh, lights up the nail and tosses it to the side. <sighs> so what are you, shapeshifter, doppelganger? Is this a good illusion? Brass, you literally stuck your hands down my pants. If it was an illusion, it wouldn't have... How have you gotten more badass and more stupid at the same time? <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe it was when the world ended. Moron, where have you been? Damn, I mean, damn. No, you're, you're clearly... What are, why am I even talking to you? You're one of them. <laughs> Just tell me who I'm... you are. I'm so tired of interrogations. <sighs> I'm Phoenix from another dimension where... Prop where you didn't, where I didn't die immediately. In all honesty, that dimension's now probably also dead, so. I'm from a dimension where I lived and you didn't. Let's Roll go with that. Check. Oh, fuck me. Uh, that's 17 plus. Wow. Yes. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, two. Uh, 19. Great. Uh,. Yeah, with a 19, uh, you see doubt flicker in Brass's eyes. And he looks at you. I could explain... I could I could explain the arcane theory behind trans-dimensional trans -dimensional gateways and it, and parallel realities, or you could just believe me. And it would save us all a lot of time. Right. I mean, for a disguise, they haven't gotten your... If you are disguised the bags under your eyes are quite lifelike and quite accurate to what i remember and your whole energy is very phoenix um your whole <laughs> gestures block <laughs> precisely uh and he says well, look, I'm like three kinds of high right now, so I'm not the best judge of character. So the sword's just going to hold you there as um, our darling uh, Wings uh, does a proper interrogation of you. Uh, and you hear a... Uh, he's like, oh, it's about time. Uh, pardon me. And he steps off to the side and like sits on a rock and... Uh, dirt and stone flies up around you as the blade uh, zips away from your throat and uh, two more come to take its place. Uh, what's your AC? 
Oh, jeez. to pull a card character sheet. 16. 16. But if, Excellent. But if I see more two coming in, I'm casting shield. Fact, oh, shield. Fact. Cold fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, shield gives you a plus so, five to 21. Yeah. Yep. Uh, great. What's the bonus to hit on this? It's going to be strength plus... What's her? Plus four, so nine. So that hits, that misses, and the offhand attack also misses. So, uh, wham! This first strike uh, hits you for. We're gonna roll two six plus the the, uh, and then plus strength is gonna be eleven plus five. So you take sixteen points of damage as uh, this. Just comet barrels into you, hits you in the chest, knocks the wind out of you, and slams you back into uh, the stone wall of the rock face. And you, <laughs> uh, two uh, swords come flying at you as uh, she throws her two scimitars. You dodge one, which just embeds itself in the uh, rocks behind you. Uh, the other one, uh, you bring up your arcane shield, and it bounces off. Uh, and the wind rushes and sucks both of them back into her hands, and standing as the dust clears, walking towards you is your wife, uh, Elizabeth, or also known as Wings, with these giant wings spreading out behind her. Like, her eyes are full blazing green balls of fire. She's dressed in, like, full plate that's uh, beaten and dented and scratched, and, like, there is a full rip out of uh, the center of her breastplate, uh, which, like, you can see the torn metal from claw marks, uh, and she is just glaring at you, raises her sword, and says, You do not get to wear his face anymore! Uh, and Brass says, uh, Darling, I do believe... And she rushes in with an action surge, um, fully not listening to him. That hits. That hits. That misses. Um... Do, 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 do. Where's your husband armor? <laughs> uh, it's uh, currently in the shop because you take another. God, I hate addition. Elijah, did you pressure. piss MC off before we started recording this series? <laughs> like, did you like email him spam or something? <laughs> One of those chain letters. Like, if you don't pass it on to, yeah, hundred percent. Like, <laughs> you take another twenty-seven points of damage as uh, That's two more scimitar news. blades. One stabs you in the thigh, pins you to the mountain as it goes all the way through and into the stone. Uh, and the other one, she takes the base of it and just breaks. Oh my god, breaks your nose. Uh, with the butt of the blade, uh, grabs you by the head and goes to headbutt, and then headbutts the arcane shield that you bring up at the last second. Uh, so she just like does take a D4 of damage uh, from breaking her own nose on the arcane shield. But uh, uh, you've got his tricks, I see. Who are you? Start talking. It took me two months after Rogan because of the trial and because I didn't know where else to go. And it was raining. And the first thing I said was they're all dead. Roll a persuasion and check with advantage. Well, I mean... The, sec the second one was good, but the first one was a nat 20, so... Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> okay. She looks at you, and there's... it's Maybe it's the words. Maybe it's in the way you said them. Maybe it's in the heartbreak in your eyes as you see what has happened to this version of your wife. But the light dies, and you just see uh, the tears coming down her face. No, they made sure that you couldn't come back from the dead. They made sure they incinerated your body. There was nothing left. How? I'm... I'm a different him. And you're a different her. But we're still alive. <laughs> so you were right about the many worlds theory. 
Yeah. I uh, honestly kind of surprised that that one I that that was a, a drunk napkin th theory. Um. Grit your teeth. This is gonna hurt. And she grabs uh, the scimitar that's pinning your leg to the mountain and <laughs> takes it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and she like immediately like cups uh, your face um, and like brings you down to the ground and begins like takes out some bandages and begins to patch you up. Um, and you is just have counted first. I told you to bite your teeth. <laughs> To grit your teeth, and I told you it was gonna hurt. I mean, come on, you've always been such a baby about these things. Um, sets your, uh, like, as she cups your face, grabs your nose, sets it. <laughs> <sighs> so, the version of you that I married is still dead. Yeah. It is still good to see you. And a griffin lands. You too. Um, and uh, Josh and Ruby and Bart uh, come out from uh, around a mountainside. Uh, and it's she looks around. At, she glances at all of you, sees Ruby and Bart, who just blood drains from their faces as they see Phoenix. Uh, and Brass stands up and says, well, if this is not a cause for celebration, I don't know what is. Who wants a drink? I do, because this is a lot. Um, and uh, mind says, one. Ruby, uh, why don't you... Um, I, oh, these plastic illusions, I never know which way it's the, the star is. Uh, and she says, it's this way, Brass. Um... Phoenix, is that is that really you? Essentially. <clears throat> Alright, well Wings hasn't killed you, so I'm 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 likely to believe you. Good to have you back. I'll explain the details um, later. Cool. Alright. Who the fuck's this? Uh pointing to Jax. Oh, oh, and also he's your this guy's your best friend. Him. Best Phoenix. friend. Best friend, Josh Mallory. You know that, right, Phoenix? Right? Your best friend. Uh, everyone. <coughs> Mallory, everyone, everyone. Mallory. Uh, he's from Earth. Uh, it's, this uh, it's actually is... pronounced e Earth because we're in a fantasy land. e I keep, I keep telling you it's just a land here. It's just a land. <laughs> <laughs> and uh this is uh queen jacqueline of freya pleasure i'm assuming you're all friends yeah uh this this so, is, well, uh, i guess i mean yes well oh yeah friends uh, mallory jacks mallory jacks this is brass and yeah. uh and a version of my wife uh wings elizabeth okay well you don't need to say that that's that just makes it sound rude i mean i know it's i know it's correct and i know it would be weird to have you call me your wife even though you're not my husband but you are my i don't <sighs> look we have to go were, to you the the, broken... were you the comet yes were you you're the Griffin Rider that I saw. Yes. Well done. Very cool. It's not one of, yes, this isn't one of our Griffins, but you are from a different many world, right? Many worlds this that are not just ours. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, no, it, yeah. Um, uh, turns out what, turns out it would have needed a second napkin. Which way's the star? Right. Uh, uh, Ruby says, yeah, it's this way. Um, come on. Uh, Wing stands up and says, I'll join you all in a moment. Um, I'm going to go blow up a mountaintop. Uh, be right back. And she whoosh, up into the sky uh, and does just what she says. You watch as uh, you all make your way uh, towards what just seems more barren mountain. Uh, you watch her fly uh, across the sky. The highest peak you watch as her green comet slams into it and the entire mountain chop. 
uh, and an avalanche starts uh, way off in the distance, and lightning strikes the mountain tops, and you can uh, hear on the howling of a wind her screams of just a whirlwind of emotions. Um, and Ruby leads you uh, through this barren uh, mountainside until suddenly she vanishes in front of you. And then Bart vanishes in front of you. And as you guys continue on, you step through and you feel this sort yeah. of weird, uh, yeah, this cool membrane as you step through. And then suddenly you can see the city of Relgan or what remains of it in front of you populated with uh, tents and there's some burning fires and like there's people milling about. Um, not too many, uh, but it's this sort of ramshackled together base of operations uh, and guards nod to Ruby and Bart as they uh, and Brass as they all guide you here and a lot of people like do double takes at uh, Phoenix and like start whispering to each other uh, as you walk through this fairly meager settlement and um, end up at this broken down but still homely looking uh, sort of rustic style tavern with a sign outside that says the rusted star uh, and you step inside and it's populated with a few people who are like uh, getting medical treatment. Other people are just drinking, doing their own form of like self-prescribed treatment um, in copious forms of alcohol. <clears throat> and uh, at the bar, Phoenix, you recognize Thalia who is cleaning a glass and talking to someone and looks up at you and then looks back down and then double takes and drops the glass and shatters. Well, aren't you supposed to be dead? And then uh, Brass, Bart, and Thalia all wave. It's the many worlds theory. And she goes, right, fuck me. <laughs> okay. Hello, other Phoenix. Hello, friends. Um, and you see that Altus Hermes tries to step through the door and <laughs> can't. Um, and like looks sadly at you, Jax. Uh, and like sort of paws or talons the ground. Am I able to, because I get a telepathic link with him for like a mile, can mm -hmm. I send him to just do uh, scouting laps? Unless yeah, this yeah. place is warded, right? Yeah, it is warded. So then maybe rather than draw attention to where it is, just like scouting within. the ground around? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd yeah. be like a giant, look, what's here? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the Hermes, are circling. Hermes, uh, gets. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Altus Hermes does get the message and goes off to uh, stealthily scout uh, the area just to make sure that nothing uh, bad is about and uh, that you all don't get ambushed by uh, smoke apocalypse. Uh, and uh, flies off. Uh, and you all are there. Wings does eventually walk back in through the tavern and sits down sort of at a, like at a six foot distance from Phoenix and is like uncomfortable trying to get closer and farther away and doesn't really know what to do. So it's just that weird six foot distance at all times. Um, and you all sit down and, uh, brass comes back with a bunch of drinks or he comes back with two drinks both held in one hand and drinks them both. And then Thalia comes and delivers drinks at the table. And Brass is like, well, welcome back from, uh, well, you didn't die, but for us, welcome back from the day. It's welcome back. Uh, well, and welcome to the rebellion. Do you know at all what's happening to us? It's tragic, truly. Makings of a many great hero, I'm sure. I've gotten the gist of it from a ladybug. Cult of Stars unleashed a unleashed feast on the world and uh, used it to take over. You hit the nail on the head. Uh, speaking of, this one's running dry. Lights up another one. <sighs> sorry, sorry. Two beverages and he lights up a joint. Explain, <laughs> explain. Now, I know we're in a fantasy land, but explain the physical logistics of that move to me. Great tolerance and years of practice. Would you like one? Holds one out to you. I would, yes. Great. Uh, he lights this up for you. Uh, roll a constitution and saving now, DC 20. And now there's... Roll Nate! 
<laughs> right. Uh, so you've been hit uh, with concoction of uh, various drugs um, that can be smoked uh, with a dosage level uh, ample to be a light buzz to somebody who did just drink two drinks and is on their third one of these within half an hour. Um, and does this probably consistently. Uh, it's wild. Immediately, you like your vision starts to swim and you start feeling pretty good and all of this nonsense begins to make sense you think you understand how magic works on a fundamental level here right i mean you, these are fantasy worlds and you've been traveling through these fantasy worlds for like a good four and a half hours now you've mastered 100%. magic um, damn right i have i mean you saw a future version of yourself drop through a portal um and you hadn't even done anything at that point. This, you are that future version of yourself. You just have to figure out how to open a portal and you know exactly how. The secret. Oh boy, do you have to piss. <laughs> and that is your train of thought. Uh, Fantastic. And, uh, but the secret of portals, secret of portals, uh, secrets, secrets. Everyone's got secrets. They cast a zone of truth thing on you. And you just begin to spiral as all of you watch Josh take one puff of this. It immediately falls to the ground. Brass picks it up and begins smoking two at once um, as Josh passes out. <laughs> I was wrong. Wrunk. I was wrong. There might be two what of them. What did you do practice. to him? Oh, well, um, it seems that uh, he is lightweight. More for me. <laughs> um, I don't so know. If you're all here. Um, man back from the uh, dead. It, uh, if he's not up, if he's not up in an hour, we'll have Daffodil fix him. Oh, I have smelling salts. It's fine. Uh, and a queen. Uh, are you all here to help? Why? I, how are you here? Why are you here? No, yeah, you kind of. It's What's like you play? said, a ladybug. Ladybug told, the ladybug told you to come on. here, and now you're here. All right, I'm not the only one there seeing this, right? Uh, no, you're not, says Wings. There is a problem. We need help. Are you, is that what you're here to po do? Point us at the biggest problem, and we'll take care of it. Biggest problem is uh, the Dread Knight Army and Lorraine, along with the Cult of Stars, and... A new cult of feast, which is, I'm sure you know about the big beastie. Yeah. Um, okay. Big tensions of smoke, monster, terror, yep. feeds on fear, whatever. Um, they're all based Hit out of the rain. It's a big portal did. that the thing comes from. Yes. Okay. Are they the ones uh, keeping the it open? Thing, so it, it comes out of Servitor Hearts. Three of them. The servitor are you the heart of flames, the hearts to keep it open. ice, and shadows. Hmm? Okay. They're using the hearts to keep it open? Yes. Um, it's... Is this Wings talking or Brass right now? This is Wings talking. Sorry. Okay. I, I dropped a little low. Um, yeah, so it's Wings talking. Jax is just, like, right. deferring to her as the leader of this world. As she that should. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah, everyone's kind of no. like when Brass I don't is think talking, anyone in this room disagrees. Eyes. When Wings is talking, everyone's at attention. I don't um, yeah, I don't think anyone in right. this room disagrees with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She just uh, blew up a mountain. Yeah, she did. Just on a whim. Um doesn't yeah. even look tired. Uh says yes. So the, the heart of flames, shadows, and ice uh being used in these spires um, to maintain the integrity of this portal um, to wherever this beast is from. All right. What's stopping you from, what's, what's stopping you from can... hitting them so far? Mostly uh, the army of undead, our lack of numbers, and uh, Silas. Who wields Silas? the heart of force. Okay. Yes. Do you have him in your world? We did. Kind of angry bastard. It was, yep. w yeah, worked with Hagen before. Well, we Interior took care of complex. Hagen. I don't know if you did. Uh, uh, very much so. No, uh, he's, he's certainly compensating. 
What? What? Okay, so. Oh, well, yes, Hagen's dead. Silas is alive. Silas has the heart of force. Three three spires with, with hearts in them. Gotta close the, gotta take out the spires to close the portal. Yes. Silas and the army of the undeads getting in the way of the getting away the stopping the spires. Yes. I I We have you. I can Yeah, we have you. Brass we have can help brass. Uh, Ruby and Bart. Ruby and, and Bart. Um Be honest with me, how up to snuff are they? Ink set up these defenses until she Hmm? Be, be honest, Bart and Ruby, how up to snuff are they? Um, and Wings does come closer and leans in uh, as Ruby and Bart are sort of like at the bar uh, chatting with each other <laughs> yeah. and you can tell flirting a little bit. They're doing their thing. Um, she says, Bart's come a long way. He's no church, but he's... He's doing well for himself. He saved many a life uh, with his healing. And Ruby is formidable. She's... Well, she needed to call on the power of the sort of demon that's given her the whole vine thing. Um, yeah. So that's, so that's stable. It's disturbing when she... It's not stable at all. She loses control quite often. Um, Bart's the only one who's <gasps> able. Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> she's not stable at all. Sorry, that was enough to pull me out of whatever that was. I would not call her stable. <laughs> Thank you uh, for the input, Mallory. <laughs> Happy to do it. I lie back down to the ground. Yeah, Still yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you're you're <laughs> just you're awake now. You're conscious. You're just like the whole world spinning, and you gotta lay down. Otherwise, it's going to just you're gonna roll off the edge of the world. Fair. Um, Phoenix, this planet's probably flat. It could probably do that. Phoenix stands up and he's now just like pacing while talking out loud. We'll tentatively mm -hmm. Bart's the only, if Bart's the only way we can get her back. We'll tentatively call them a pair. Bart, you. Okay, sits <laughs> sits back down. Here's the plan. Mm -hmm. Starts like gra starts like grabbing glasses that like people have finished. Grabs one that someone hadn't finished. Dumps it off to the side. Flips it. Mm -hmm. up. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Thalia sighs and says, <sighs> "Well, he hasn't changed." All right, we got we've got three and targets to set up a plan. and three teams. We've got three targets and three teams that can actually that can actually hit them. The spires need to go. They go. Portal closes. Feast is no longer a problem for this world. Oh, wing, wings, brass, Bart, and Ruby. Each of you can take a, take a spire. The only thing that's been stopping you so far has been Silas, the Dread Knight, and the Dread Knight's army. So, that's where we come. Mm. Is the Dread Knight Sorry. still up, or is Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the, the, we're gonna help with the what night? <laughs> and when you say undead, so you were saying people in your world die and they come back to life. And is this another way to not die? No. Uh, this is, uh, think corpses that are moving around under control of an evil willpower. I'd rather not, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> if it makes you feel better, they are essentially already dead. Although and so we need to dead them again. Yeah. So, three of us... The three of us points to Jack. Jack, Mallory, and me. The three of us will hit first. Mm -hmm. Lure up... Lure out the enemy forces. Shit. <laughs> Brings, like, another beer stunt. <laughs> stunt. Away. Yep. away. Away from the targets. If we can draw out... If we can draw them out, that can clear the path for the three of you to hit the targets, close the portal. If we're not dead by the time the spires go down, I'd be huh? very appreciative <laughs> if you could bail us out from whatever mess we're getting to. And when you use dead here, you're meaning the permanent kind. Right. Is this a sort of stasis death or is this sort of like the oops all pockets death? 
I mean, so here's the problem with fighting against the Dread Knight, right? Um, powerful necromancer. Uh, one of the issues with fighting his army is whenever we lose someone in the fight, they then come back as one of his soldiers. Um, so we lose someone, their army gets stronger, ours gets weaker, and it's just uh, it's a bad cycle. Which is why the three of us will be doing everything in our power to take out the Dread Knight first. He goes, the whole army goes. Tide shifts dramatically in our favor. Hey, Phoenix. Hey, Phoenix, can I have a quick sidebar? <laughs> Just real quick sidebar. Want a, want a sidebar with your best friend? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> best friend sidebar. I stand up and grab Phoenix and Jack, and I start pulling them to, the, to one wall. Real quick, guys. So sorry. Brass, wings, everybody else, you're all great. Quick sidebar. Can you fucking explain something to me right now? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? There's, I'm going to put this as simply as I can. There's a bad guy. He controls all the, all the corpses. We kill the bad guy, the uh -huh. corpses go away. Okay, but so, so, so from, from sort of... From sort of my perspective, there's an army of zombies and a powerful dread knight commanding them. That sounds horrifying. So there's that scenario. Or there's three stable objects that just need to be knocked over with a hammer. And instead of not of signing us up for the knock over with a hammer mission, you're saying that we're going to take over the army of zombies mission. Have I got that right? On the plus yeah, side, the army doesn't get bigger if we stay alive. They have, if they, right. if everyone, sure. if, if, Let's do it. if everyone, if everyone here could take on the Dread Knight, they'd have done it already. The fact that they haven't means that they don't have the resources. We're the difference in the battle, which means we have to take on the factor that they couldn't. I mean, yeah, but like, we're, we're not, we're, you, you are different. Queen Jack is different. I'm just a guy. Like, like, listen, 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 I, you, this is a, this is a, a land powered by zombies and there's like mountaintops exploding and people flying in green spheres like I don't know that I can do this I, I put my hands on you Mallory's shoulders you have done it shoulders. before Mallory my actual best friends are just people with sharp bits of metal we do this for a living you might be just a guy, but you're just a guy with a weapon and a desire to stay alive to see tomorrow. And I promise you, that is enough. You can do this. It is, it is hurtful that you don't count me as one of your best friends, is all I'm saying. We've known each other for... Optimist... For generously 48 hours. And shared something some friends never share. She gets it. His friends, I do think, are the exception to those some friends <laughs> never share. <laughs> For the record, I'll just jump in right there. Okay, I will, uh, Josh, Josh uh, sort of like walks back and slumps back into his chair and grabs like the nearest beverage and just resigns himself to hearing the rest of this air quotes plan. Yeah. Uh, so with your... Uh, sort of bigger your ambition your whatever we want to call it sort of uh your resolve uh reinforced uh you all begin to sort of set up a plan so just above the table uh so we know what's happening your plan currently is to uh i'm assuming use the rusted star to tunnel port in yeah presumably okay R so rusted you'll use star, that to tunnel port rusted in star you're sending tunnel port, Ruby and Bart. Tunnel port onto the Ruby and Bart for one tower, brass for a, a different tower, wings for a third, and they go okay. after we go. Because step one is we come out, we pick a fight, we draw the enemy to us. Step two is they go. How for many the of the other rebels do you want to bring in? Quite honestly. We can bring as many as can fit in the star. They do not come out. Um, they do not come out unless the people attacking the towers request assistance. Or unless the Dread Knight is dead. Okay. 
So you'll bring in those reinforcements uh, to sit waiting for the Dread Knight to fall or for assistance on the towers. Uh, excellent. Um, do you have a plan for how to deal with Silas? Uh, hope he also gets drawn in. Kill him when he does. <laughs> Okay, so your plan is to fight Silas and the Dread Knight at the same time. I don't have a better one. Unless... I'll say! (laughs) 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 Uh, Above table, um, do we know where, like, Angel is? Dead. Uh, Angel is dead. Angel's dead, okay. Yeah, the only Starbreakers left alive are... Wings and Brass, and then by proxy, Ruby and Bart. Okay, okay. Yeah. We've got two Starbreakers. We have a third Starbreak. We have a third. We have optimistically a third Starbreaker comprised of two weak ones. And well, you, got- have, you have two Starbreakers and two unpaid interns. Yep. And, yeah. and you said Ink did the fortifications of the. Yeah, but then there was also the implication that she died afterwards. But then she you also. You know what, died. actually? You know what, actually? I've got a better idea. Thank God. I'm going to move one of the cups. Mm-hmm. Push it in a different direction. We'll fight, we'll fight, we'll fight heart with heart. We're going to, gonna we're send, going to wings send wings. After Silas. Wings after Silas. Well, which means we're bringing as many of the rebels as we can to hit the tower closest to where we deploy. Okay. So wings will be distracting, will be, at least, if all goes well, and we all know that uh, plan always survives first contact with the enemy, uh, wings is going after Silas to drag him away from the main fight of you all, the three of you versus the Dread Knight, and then you are distracting the Dread Knight and hopefully destroying his army before they take out uh, Brass, Bart, Ruby, and the various rebels who are on the towers. Yep. Great. Um, you all, it is nighttime. You did arrive in the middle of the no, night, so you can take a... L- no, we're, yeah, we're yes. re- we're doing this tomorrow. I'm stabbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've I'm been tired. stabbed repeatedly by, uh, your <laughs> wife. Uh, I so can you all can really take a long rest. Them. Yep. Yes. Get all my Great, spells yeah. back. So you guys get the benefits of a long rest as you all turn in. Um, You're shown to, like, various tents uh, and, like, uh, places to stay. Or, well, no, you got, the three of you get rooms in the Rusted Star. Does the Rusted Star have rooms? Yeah, it does. I don't, it does? Okay, great. Yeah. Um, Yeah, you guys uh, get the rooms of X Starbreakers. Um, (laughs) Oh, that's dark. yeah, Yeah, it's pretty rough. Uh, Phoenix. Somebody, you... yeah. Somebody's clothes are laid out on the bed. <laughs> yeah. There's a sad puppy that's waiting that's never going to see its master it's again. Angels one is just like a shrine, and people are leaving like empty. <laughs> There's like <laughs> coins and flowers. Coins yeah, and yeah, flowers. yeah. Uh, fully like these. These rooms are like uh, Angel's room is a shrine. Like has become a place of worship for some people. Um, who else is? Uh, who else just absolutely ate? Well, what it? about snow? Uh, Snow's uh, room is just some empty boxes and uh, like the a bed frame and people drag in a mattress for uh, you to use Jacks. Um, I love that Josh is the reluctant hero here. This is so cool. Mm-hmm. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. Hero, yeah. people keep throwing the word hero around like it means <laughs> something. Like I'm not just a guy. <laughs> you were just not scared of the most terrifying thing in the world for like half a second, and it gave the thing such intense imposter syndrome that it died. <laughs> Is that what happens? Pretty <laughs> much. Spoilers. Spoilies. Spoilies. <laughs> Listen. Well, then you also Listen. step on it. Listen, like most of my best friends at some point were just a guy. I was just a guy. Aww. Phoenix is when you're, you, when it comes down to it, just a guy who's pretty smart. He's a man in a can, no, right? Yeah. Josh, yeah. this means you're on the right track to best friend them. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was already there. It's a little hurtful to know how far I slid in the last forty-five minutes to an hour. 
It's fine. But very cool to see that drugs showed you that it isn't a fantasy land. It is just a land. All it took was drugs. Title of my autobiography. <laughs> All it took was drugs. Everybody, you hear? You heard that, viewers? And they were, you were selling books and friendship. Okay, cut that in post. Um, <laughs> so you all take the rooms of extra yeah, breakers. Friendship. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're all selling friendship and books. Um, <laughs> Phoenix, you take your uh, old room, which does have some of your gear still in it, or this other version of you's gear. Um, so you can like tinker around and build things if you wanted to switch out any of your uh, artificer uh, sort of enchantment yeah, yeah. things. Uh, and yeah, yeah. as you are sort of like tinkering around and seeing what you have, there's a gentle knock on the door. As you open it, there's wings standing there, um, like all dressed down from like no longer doesn't have the wings out, doesn't like isn't glowing with energy is just Elizabeth and is standing there and is like, look, I know you're not my husband and I know that I'm not your wife. Um, but would it be... I take a step I... back, take her by the hand, and I'm pulling the door shut behind her. <laughs> and we fade to black there because there's a y there are YA characters <laughs> present. Hopefully Jax isn't present. <laughs> <laughs> oui. um, I like to think that during the planning scene in the tavern, Jax was drinking, like, milk Oh, yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, apple yeah. cider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was sparkling cider for Jack. Like, <laughs> was handed a glass of beer, which then, as she took it, <laughs> turned into yeah, yeah, sparkling yeah. apple cider. Um, and she just drank it like it was no big deal, like it was nothing. Darn uh, tootin', this is good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and as night continues and the sun rises and you all wake well rested and you begin to prepare for the battles ahead. That is where we are going to call today's session, and we'll see you all next week for the thrilling conclusion. Thank you all so much for tuning in and unwrapping this special edition Dungeons & Dragons episode of CamCat Unwrapped Into the Margins. That is a mouthful. You can find all of our unputdownable CamCat books at camcatbooks.com or wherever books are sold. You can also find all of us who were in the show today in these social links down below. They're going to be appearing magically. <laughs> and we'll see you all in two weeks in the next episode. <laughs>